Hi, Marcus here from Fifth Edge. Uh, for those who know me, hello, how are you doing? For those who don't, well, you're lucky people. I'm here to answer one particular question that was on our, our recent poll, and that is in construction engineering in the Middle East, are there any jobs out there and are there any jobs coming up? So let me do my best. I've been here for 15 years, heading up construction engineering recruitment in the region. So the answer to the question is not an easy one. It is the fact that obviously COVID has hit us in a lot of ways. We've had projects cancelled, Expo and lots of other ones, a lot of projects put on hold, some up to 2025, uh, and some uh, who have just come to completion. And then there's those companies that are downsizing, and then there's those companies that are shaking the tree, getting rid of some of those individuals who just don't really coincide to where they want to go. And then there's another sting in the tail as well. Uh, we've been a victim of our own COVID success in the ability to work across multiple ge geographical lines and work remotely. We've seen a lot of companies looking to not so much just outsource, but put their some of the work into other departments, other offices around the world who have got cheaper overheads. For example, design maybe going to an office in Malaysia or South Africa, something along those kind of those kind of lines anyway. And that's not helping any of us who are sitting here looking for new jobs. Um, uh, so uh, there's another little bit as well, you know, we've got 12 billion worth of projects finishing up in uh, in Macau and, and those kind of areas and those people are going to be wanting to come to somewhere else and they have got exceedingly strong CVs, so you really got to bear that in mind. Now, a few comments about, you know, why are we seeing so many job adverts on the Gulf Talents, the Monsters Bait, etc. Uh, okay, news flash to you, the vast majority of those jobs really don't actively exist a lot and then explain this I know you get very frustrated about not getting feedback and, uh, and your application is going to be a dark hole. Companies pay for an extended amount of adverts on these platforms, whether it's LinkedIn or wherever it is. And they do what's called talent pooling. If you don't know what talent pooling is, any moderately intelligent company do talent pooling. 93% of CEOs across the world in all sectors say the biggest Achilles of them not reaching their, master, their, their main potential or their, their potential is the lack of prompt availability of skill sets and experience when they need them. So talent pooling basically does exactly that. It pulls talent, pulls them, and then has them ready for what's around the corner. Now, the issue is that uh, any company cannot, is very resource hungry to go to an old database and try and keep all that database alive because that data gets old very, very quickly. You as candidates, you can believe how quickly it gets old. So it's far easier for them to continually pull fresh, more and more talent and have them all ready. It doesn't do you any good as a, as a candidate. So just better explain that straight off the bat. Now. What are our options? Uh, well, the problem is that the, there are projects coming into the UAE, but definitely not enough for the tsunami of people who are available right now. And realistically, those people who still are employed are working on projects that are going to be ramping down. And as the new projects start to ramp up, well, those are the homes that they're going to go to if they're lucky enough to, to, to match the criteria required. So what's our other options? Well, you've got to draw a line in the, in the sand. That's, that's the truth of the matter. Uh, and look for other options out with the region. Now, if you're looking to maybe looking about, say, well, there's a lot of recruiters calling me about jobs, etc. You're going to be very, very careful about external recruiters in times like these. They, like a lot of us, are in a panic stations. Now, look at a position of a, of a project manager, mid-level, even lower level, even some of the senior levels. Do you really think that a company is going to be happy paying them? particularly large invoice on the back of your CV, when in fact they could basically open the doors and they need a security team to stop the people coming in there to try and get jobs. And be very wary of it as well, because you've also got, uh, they own your backside for, for up to 12 months. So even though you might get an opportunity with that same company 11 and a half months down the line, that invoice will still follow your application. So be very wary about who you work with. There are some great companies out there who work alongside those brands who have been assigned X amount of positions for whatever project in whatever country, uh, and they do a fantastic job, of course. But again, looking at other opportunities out with the UAE, we've got Kuwait, we've got Qatar, uh, Bahrain's nice, Oman, the garden of, uh, of the Middle East, beautiful part of the world. Um, and then there's that other little place you may or may not have heard of, it's called Saudi Arabia. Now, I'm not being paid for the Saudi tourism board here, but I am going to say you've got to take it seriously, draw the line in the sand. Affectionately known the capital as Riyadh de Janeiro these days, 
it gives them some phenomenal opportunities, not just for men, but for women as well. Uh, I'm an ambassador for women in construction, and we have seen, I've been following this very closely. I would certainly say over the last 18 months, um, the arms are open to all, both genders to go over there and at all levels. Even at board level, we'll be working on a few, a few um, assignments on that. Anyone with the skill set and the, the experience to reach the, that, that the Vision 30, that Vision 50 projects they're working on is very welcome. And I expect that to become more and more welcome as we go forward. If you're a young graduate, has maybe enjoyed the lifestyle of Dubai, etc. Look at your career. They're building bloody Belgium, for goodness sake. There's most, some, some sexy projects with great companies having the opportunity to go in there and accelerate your career over the next five, 10, whatever years is a once in a lifetime opportunity. So take it very, very seriously. Um, that's about all I've got to look at here. But the one last thing, if you do want to go to Saudi, please, please do not be asking for 60 or 100% on top of your salary. It is literally, you're lucky to get what you're getting just now. Any company is asking you to, or is offering an exorbitant amount. There's usually a reason behind that. And anyone who's been in the Middle East for a while, that will correct itself. And you'll find yourself in a, either out of work or looking for something else in a different part of the world. Um, so tomorrow, I'm going to look at the other question we were asked about confidential job applications. You feel kind of comfortable, but looking a little bit rocky maybe in the future, you want to put your hat in the ring, but don't want to upset those who are currently paying your uh, your salary as it is. In the meantime, stay safe, uh, be good to each other, leave your comments, thank you for your support. Ciao, ciao.